Hello students and welcome to my channel Math Hub. So today in this video I'll tell you about the expansion in Fourier series. So we have seen in the previous video that Fourier series is applicable for any function which is periodic in nature. Periodic means when a function repeats itself after a particular interval of time. And in my last video I have also given you some useful results that we will be using in the Fourier series, right? So let us understand that how do we expand a periodic function having a period of 2L. So let us assume that fx is a periodic function with period 2L over the interval c to c plus 2L. Then the Fourier series expansion is given by fx is a0 by 2 plus summation n going from 1 to infinity a n cos n by x by L plus b n sin n by x by L. Right. So what we will do, whichever function is given to us in any general interval, we will compare the interval with C and C plus 2L and we will calculate the values of L. Right. Once L is calculated, we have to calculate the values of these coefficients A0, An and Bn. How are these coefficients calculated? These are called the Fourier coefficients and they are calculated using the following formulas. A0 is 1 by L integration c to c plus 2l fx dx. So you can see that the interval on which we are integrating that is over the entire period, right? Over the entire interval. Similarly, a n can be calculated as 1 by L integration c to c plus 2l fx into cos n by x by L dx. So you can see that we are multiplying a n with cos term. The same term is multiplied here when we calculate the coefficient a n. And similarly, we have to calculate the 1 by L integration C to C plus 2L fx into sine n by x by L dx. Right now, here in both the cases, when we calculate a n and b n, n goes n is running from 1 till infinity. Right, so you can see the summation is running from n equal to 1 to infinity. Now, let us apply this formulas while calculating any periodic function over the interval C to C plus 2L. So, we need to calculate the Fourier series of the following function f of x is x by 2 over the interval 0 less than x less than 2 pi which has period 2 pi. So what is the so if I want to check whether this function is periodic or not what we can do is we can draw the graph and you can see that in the interval 0 to 2 pi the behavior of the function is like this right and when we extend the interval from 2 pi to 4 pi you can see that the function is behaving in the same manner right so similarly if i extend this function from 4 pi to 6 pi i'll again get the same type of graph right so this type of graph is showing me that the function is so let us calculate the Fourier series of this function so now to calculate the Fourier series will be first calculating the coefficient a0 right how to calculate a0 so before we calculate a0 i told you that we will compare our interval with c to c plus 2l right so here the interval given to us is 0 to 2 pi so when you compare 0 to 2 pi with c to c plus 2l you will find that c is equal to 0 and c plus 2l is equal to 2 pi so from here you can put c equal to 0 so you'll get 2l is equal to 2 pi so l comes out to be 5 right now let us put the values in a naught so the formula for a naught was 1 by l integration c to c plus 2l fx dx right so let's substitute the values so 1 by l l is by integration 0 to 2 pi f of x is x by 2 dx. So I'm just substituting the values, right? So now you can see that I can take out 2 common from here. That's the constant. And integration of x is x square by 2 and we integrate it from 0 to 2 pi. And when you integrate it from 0 to 2 pi, we get 1 by 4 pi multiplied by 2 pi whole square is 4 pi square. So you can see 4 pi and 4 pi square will get cancelled and we get a naught as pi, right? So now let us calculate the next coefficient, the Fourier coefficient a n. Now what is a n? a n is 1 by L integration c to c plus 2 L f of x into cos n pi x by L 
dx, right? Now let us substitute the values in this. So this is 1 by pi integration 0 to 2 pi. Then we have f of x is x by 2 into cos. Now n pi x, l is also pi. So pi and pi will get cancelled and we get the term as cos nx dx, right? Now further, what we can do is we can take out this 2 outside. So we can write it over here. So now this is integration. So this is my first function and this is my second function. And when we apply the eyelid rule, we get 1 by 2 pi. And when we integrate it, first function as it is x, integration of cos nx becomes sin nx by n, right? And then we put a minus sign. Now derivative of x is 1 and integration of sin nx by n becomes minus cos nx by n square. Right. And now we put the limits from 0 to 2 pi. Now what will happen when we put the limit 0 to 2 pi? Let's see. So here you can see that when we put the limit 2 pi in this, sine 2 and pi is 0. So this whole term will become 0. Similarly, when we put 0, 0 into sine 0 is again 0. So that means this term is always giving me a value 0. So what are we left with then? So we are left with minus into minus becomes plus we have n squared so we get 1 by 2 pi n squared and now when i put in the value i'll get cos 2 n pi minus cos of 0 right so how much is this cos 2 n pi means it's an even number so it is 1 and cos 0 is also 1 so you can see 1 minus 1 that becomes 0 right so a n turns out to be 0 now let us calculate the next coefficient that is bn. So bn is again the same formula, cos is replaced by sine. So 1 by L C2 C plus 2 L f of x into sine n pi x by L dx. Right? So that turns out to be 1 by pi integration 0 to 2 pi. And now we have x by 2. So I'm writing that 2 outside x into sine nx dx. Again, the same thing. L is pi, so pi pi will get cancelled, right? So again, this is my first function and sine is my second function. So this is 1 by 2 pi and then apply the eyelid rule. So x is the first function. Integration of sine nx is minus cos nx by n. Then minus the derivative of x is 1. Integration of minus cos x is minus sine nx by n square, right? And then we limit, put the limit 0 to 2 pi. Again, the same concept you can see here. Sine 2 and pi is 0, sine 0 is 0. So this term will give you 0 only. Now, what are we left with? We are left with um, minus 1 by 2 and pi. This is constant. And now we are left. Let's put 2 pi. So we will get 2 pi cos 2 and pi minus 0. Okay. So you can see 2 pi gets cancelled. Right. And we get the term as cos 2 and pi is 1. So this is minus 1 by a. Right. So finally, what is my Fourier series expansion? So the Fourier series expansion is fx is equal to a0 by 2 plus summation n going from 1 to infinity we have a n cos n pi x by l then summation n going from 1 to infinity b n and then we have sine n pi x by l so now when you substitute a naught is pi so this term will become pi by 2 then you can see that a n is 0 so this whole term is 0 and then in the next term, we can write this as minus summation n going from 1 to infinity. Bn is 1 by n. I've taken the minus sign outside. And we have sine n pi x by l. L is pi. So pi and pi will get cancelled. And we get sine nx. So this becomes my four-year series expansion. And this is my Right? So I hope you have understood the method. So you, you need to just know the Fourier coefficients and you need to know the eyelid rule because in every question of Fourier, repeatedly the eyelid rule is applicable.
right so let's do one more question and that will make it very clear to you that how to apply the four years right so let's move on to the next question you need to calculate the four year series for the following function fx is equal to pi minus x where x lies between 0 and pi and it is 0 when x lies between pi and 2 pi. So in the last question, you can see that the function was not discontinuous. It was a continuous function in the entire interval. So now what has happened? The total interval is from 0 to 2 pi, but there is a discontinuity. So the discontinuity is at the point pi. So you can see that the function has been broken into two subintervals. 0 to pi, the function is defined as pi minus x. And between pi to 2 pi, the function is defined as 0. So let us try to calculate the Fourier series expansion. So first of all, uh, before we start with the Fourier series, so let us calculate what are C and C plus 2L. So the general interval is C and C plus 2L. So according to the problem, what is our general interval? Our general interval is from 0 to 2 pi. You will check the entire interval, right? So from here, C comes out to be 0 and C plus 2L comes out to be 2 pi. So that makes it that L is equal to pi, right? So if L is equal to pi, so let's calculate. So I'm not going to write in the formulas. I'll just put in the values directly. So 1 by L, that is 1 by pi integration 0 to 2 pi fx dA, right? Now you can see that the function is not defined over the entire interval 0 to 2 pi. So what to do? We will break the interval, right? So we will break it as 1 by pi 0 to pi. In the interval 0 to pi, the value of the function is pi minus x dx. And then the next break is from pi to 2 pi. And the function is 0 dx. So the second integral will give you 0 only. So we get 1 by pi. Now integration of pi is pi x. Integration of x is x square by 2. Limits from 0 to pi. So that turns out to be 1 by pi. When you put pi, we get pi square. 0, you'll get 0. And then you'll get pi square by 2. Right, so pi square minus pi square by 2 is pi square by 2. And when you multiply it with pi, what will you get? You'll get pi by 2. So A0 comes out to be pi by 2. Secondly, let's calculate An. So An is similar, 1 by pi, integration 0 to 2 pi, f of x into cos n pi x by L. So it will be simply cos nx dx. And since the function is not available for the interval, whole interval 0 to 2 pi, so we will put a break. And the break is from 0 to pi, pi minus x into cos nx. And the second integral is pi to 2 pi, function is 0 into cos nx dx. Right? So you can see very clearly that this integration will become. 0 right so now let's see what is there in this one so 1 by pi is the numerical constant out so now pi minus x acts as the func first function and cos and x acts as the second function so pi minus x first function as it is integration of cos and x that is sin and x by n minus derivative of pi minus x will be minus 1 and then integration of sin nx would be minus cos nx by n square. Right? And the limit is from 0 to pi. Now let us see which terms will become 0. When I put pi, pi minus pi will make it 0. And when I put 0, sin 0 is 0. So this term will entirely give you a 0. Now let us see what happens to this term. You have minus, minus, minus. Eventually a minus sign will come out. And we have n square also and we have pi also. Now let us substitute the limits in the rest of the things. So it is cos nx. So it is cos n pi minus cos of 0 is 1. So in my previous video I told you what is cos n pi. Cos n pi is minus 1 raised to power n. Right? Minus 1. So you can categorize your answer into two parts. 
when n is odd and when n is even right so what will happen when n is odd when n is odd this term will be minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 is minus 2 multiplied with a minus sign it will give you 2 n square pi and when n is even this term is 1 1 minus 1 will give you a 0 right now let us try to calculate bn so bn is 1 by pi so you'll get the same formula 0 to 2 pi fx sine nx dx and when we break it we will get 0 to pi pi minus x into sine nx dx and for the interval pi to 2 pi it will become 0 right? by the same concept. So now let's apply the eyelid rule 1 by pi pi minus x as it is integration of sine nx is minus cos nx by n then derivative of pi minus x is minus 1 integration of minus cos nx by n is minus sin nx by n right and again limits from 0 to pi now which terms will become 0 you can see that this term will become 0 now because sin n pi is 0 sin 0 is also 0 so now what is left let's see what is left so from here you can see that you can take out minus 1 by n common out minus 1 by n pi and now when you put the upper limit pi, pi minus pi will make it 0. So we will get a term from the lower limit. So for lower limit there is already a minus sign. 0, pi minus 0 is simply pi. And then we have cos 0 that is 1. So minus pi gets cancelled and we have simply 1 by n. So what is your Fourier series expansion? So the Fourier series expansion is a naught by 2 plus summation n going from 1 to infinity a n cos n x plus summation n going from 1 to infinity b n sin n x right now when we substitute the values here what will i get a naught is coming out to be pi by 2 so pi by 2 divided by 2 will become pi by 4 plus now a n is now you can see that the value of n is only obtained when n is odd. For n even it is always 0. So what we can do to make it a continuous summation, we can change n to n minus 1 for 2n minus 1 for odd. And if it is even, we can change it to 2n. So n is 2 by n square pi. So we can write it as 2 by 2n minus 1 whole square into pi into cos of 2n minus 1 x. I am just replacing n with 2n minus 1 because only the expansion will open for odd value. Right? And then we have summation bn. So it is summation n going from 1 to infinity 1 by n sin nx. Right? So this is how we have obtained the Fourier series expansion for this function. Right? So I hope it is clear. And do practice the questions, right? So this is the graph obtained for the uh, function fx equal to pi minus x, right? So this is how the graph of pi minus x in the interval 0 to pi and pi to 2 pi where it is 0. You can see that the graph is behaving in this manner. So the Fourier series we have already obtained. So... Thank you so much for listening. If you like the video, do hit the like button. Those of you who have not subscribed my channel, do subscribe my channel to get the latest updated video. Believe in yourself and you will be able to succeed. Thank you.